turned out super nice. There's a spindle lock in place, as you can see, it rotates. I uh, switched out the nut for a nice knob you can use, and it just clamps down the spindle, and now I can't spin it. And then uh, you loosen it up, and then it spins. So, very big. Right, so, I'm going to show a demo of my spindle indexer. It's uh, basically a software update, though I did need to make a um, lock for my spindle. And basically what I, that will allow me to do is I can uh, lock the spindle so I can, you know, do stuff at each index, maybe with a Dremel tool or something. And also it allows me to preload the spindle so that the pulley doesn't pull back when I stop the spindle. So um, you don't get that, like, jitter. Anyways, uh, I'll show you how the software works. There's uh, an additional menu um, called Indexer. And the steps you can select are between one and the total number of uh, transitions on your encoder wheel. So, uh, you know, for me right now I'm at 96. So you can go all the way up to 96, which would be a 360 degree rotation. But, um, yeah. anyways, uh, so basically, two steps. You can see how that works can do, you know, if I want to go a quarter of the way. 24, so that'll do like a quarter of a rotation. That's kind of neat. Um, basically, without a Dremel tool and a Dremel holder, the only thing you can really do with this would be to um, make scribe marks, I guess, for like a graduated collar, which is something I wanted to do for the lathe anyways. Um, and I'll kind of show you how that works and how accurate it is. As you can see, it's pretty easy. If I was using a Dremel tool, I'd lock the spindle down a bit more. Um, however, the way I'm cutting here, it's not going to cause the spindle to really rotate. So, so it's pretty easy to use. I don't have to uh, mess around with any pins or anything. And uh, it's, if I want to get a, a different set of, um, you know, if I need more more transitions or whatever, less transitions, I can always... Alright, so we have our, um, what is it, eight, eight scribe marks from the 12 steps on a 96 encoder wheel, so to verify the accuracy, I can just do another step, come back over this line, and you'll see that uh, it's exactly on the line, you know, so that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the lines between by going down to six steps so that'll get us um, 16 scribe marks and then it'll kind of give you an idea of well this is how we can you know do obviously our uh, micrometer dials or you know can do some facets or maybe some like cheesy gears and plastic if we had a dremel tool or something like a milling head attached to the cross slide um, compound or whatever. So, you know, for me, I think this will be pretty beneficial until I get a dividing head for my mill, but um, if I didn't build one, they're relatively expensive anyways. So the notion of being able to use this on the lathe um, not only justifies having the lathe and building the lathe, but also, uh, you know, 
gives me some more capability without having to spend two hundred, three hundred dollars for a dividing head or even a rotary table. Um, you know, maybe be able to cut some simple gears on, in plastic or something like that. So uh, there you go. As you can see, we're back to the home. And we'll go back over that scribe line again, so you can see that it's still still accurate. And as you can see, it is. It's still hitting that same line. And um, the way the cutter is, I mean, I could probably try and go in between these, but there's not much real estate, so.